Ciao guys, welcome back to the Heartful Podcast. It's me, Matteo. How was your week? My week has been uh, has been a bit stressful. I've been trying to work out um, what to do with my art. I'm a bit. I'm a little bit um, stuck at the moment. And every time I paint, every time I draw something, like I get stressed and I don't like it. So I think I I am trying to um, give a little bit of space, take a little bit of time off from working on my artworks. And yeah, I think that will help a bit, hopefully, uh, at some point. Uh, because obviously I still want to do it I still want to do painting I still want to do drawings but I don't know I feel there is I don't know there is no meaning at the moment I'm just painting and drawings for the sake of it and I'm used to work with like in cities um, so like there is an art there is um, a why behind what I'm doing, like what behind my drawings, behind my paintings, and obviously, um, if I'm working on a commission, I just yeah, I just paint or draw the picture, um, and yeah, if I do, if I'm working on something on my own, um, it's just um, there is there is a reason behind so. It's it's kind of weird for me to just paint and draw for the sake of it. Um, in the last yeah, I've been do I've been working like this in for the last uh, two three years. So I found I found really stressful, um, no having a reason and no having a goal. Yeah, that's that's the word I'm looking for. No having a goal uh, for for what I want to say with my uh, artworks so it's been it's been a bit stressful the last week um, I felt quite a lot of pressure I'm trying to relax a little bit more I think I've been I've been working quite a lot lately um, doing doing the podcast obviously researching for the podcast and stuff like that and doing my own projects I'm trying to organize a couple of commission um, up go and yeah I think it's been quite a lot of work altogether and so I'm trying to take it easy for a bit try to relax try to plan the next step which is always important I think I can't wait to galleries to be open I think they're gonna be open in a bit to be honest um, today is uh, the 15th of June so I think it's, they're gonna be open soon and so we can start doing exhibition again and try to work with galleries and stuff like that I can't wait I just yeah um, kind of tired of this lockdown and we need to go back out there and make a work yeah we we need to we need to move on try to move on on obviously in the safest um, environment safest way we can um, because of this coronavirus still still on and yeah so so today I want to questioning art meaning I always uh, found it really interesting what makes an artwork worth a lot of money but not only so no, it's not only about the money it's I just want to understand try to understand or try to question why something then um, basically doesn't have any value it will become 
something valuable, something um, like something important, or it can become even a a, a pop culture um, symbol icon. So try to touch on this argument today. On this, I want to try to touch on this um, subject today, and. I want to take, for example, I think it's the best example we can think of. Um, I want to talk about a bit Andy Warhol. So I, I'm always um, conflicted. I always have this conflicted feeling for Andy Warhol, and I think. Okay, let's let's dive in for a bit. Um, I want to talk about especially the aspect of what makes something artsy and valuable. So I want to, for example, I want to pick uh, one, of, one of the Andy Warhol famous um, sculpture, if we can call that, uh, the piles of Brillo boxes. It was one of the subjects of his work. And I'm not I'm not a fan um, of any Warhol, even if um, doing some research for this episode and in my hometown, I uh, just because it's kind of like a curious character, it's um, um, I kind of understand and I appreciate more. The artist. Um, obviously, I'm nobody to say something about him, but obviously, everyone has an opinion. And yeah, that's that's today we're gonna try to articulate this, um, what I think, and what did any world do with his art, from or in my in my opinion. So, as I said, I want to talk about the piles of Brillo boxes, uh, which was one of his one of the subjects of his work. And the warrior, um, he usually he takes he takes every day an everyday object and makes and makes him as an artwork so like the Brillo box in particular if if you take an object like that that at the time was really um, was really was an American symbol like everyone had those um, Brillo soap boxes so and I think that's why he took it as an example as a as a subject of his art and it he takes this these soap boxes and he place them in the gallery it's supposed to contain high culture object so the boxes takes more value and more importance as an artist of this of this level, because at, at this moment Andy Warhol was already famous, and that's what I wanna really uh, try to um, understand. If a famous artist takes anything, an object, or it does a painting, or whatever, it does something, and he puts them in a gallery is does it ta- does it have the same value of any art any other artworks Warhol's Brillo soap boxes reflects the emerging american consumer culture in the 1960s and the growing power of a brand furthermore it challenged the notion of the originality through the use of appro- appropriation and seriality. 
I kind of do not agree with this kind of art. Or I better say, I do not agree with the idea of whatever an artist produces is good for art. Just because the artist is famous. For example, in 1961, Piero Manzoni produced artist poop in a can, or more called, it's more famous for artist shit. Piero Manzoni did this particular artwork to send a critic to the art world, saying that, and I'm, I'm quoting, I should like all artists to sell their fingerprints or stage competition to see who can draw the longest line or sell the shit in a tin. The fingerprints is the only sign of a personality that can be accepted. If collector wants something intimate, really personal to the artist, what better than the artist's own shit? That's really is. That's what Manzoni said at the time and I completely agree I'm meaning Manzoni critics the fact that something anything that an artist does a famous artist does can become an artwork valuable and worth enough to been put in the museum and an exhibition so it's kind of what I'm trying to say um, is it anything that a famous artist produce worth m- not only money but worth even the time for the audience to go see in an exhibition it's worth it to be put in a museum or in a gallery for an exhibition for example, another artist like Mar- Marcel Duchamp had the same idea in 1970, so even before, with his fountain. Duchamp decided to send a message to the art world and mostly to the art critics. What makes an audience like this kind of art? Be persuaded by a famous, a strong, collocate artist and make them believe blindly on what art is I think it's still really relevant at this time it's more I feel the taste of art has been lost in a sense and most of the time now if a piece of art it's not messy um, it doesn't have any strange drops of paint of the installation it's not weird it doesn't it's not interesting it's no it doesn't have the wow factor when just a simple well done drawing or painting it doesn't have that kind of impact on the audience and I think I think it's sad in a sense that because of that you can you're going to have more artists that do that do those kind of painting and those kind of art losing and with the time you can go losing like techniques and obviously it's every single painting every single artworks has a, a technique a way to do it and it's no I'm not say it's easier I'm not say um, it's less important but the idea that that kind of art it's more it sells more so any like for a young artist that obviously wants to wants to um, make a living with uh, with the art and they see that even if they learn how to draw 
nice a nice picture comp like learning composition perspective value most of the time what they're gonna sell it's what doesn't have all these things which is not a bad a bad thing but imagine that with the ears you're going to lose those artists that are interested in tech like old techniques and what makes a picture perfect technically perfect so losing those people you're gonna lose those techniques at some point so I'm kind of like it's a bit worrying for me and I remember that um, we were when I was in university we were having a discussion about this not specifically about this but it was reflecting um, on this argument and I remember that um, we, uh, we were having a conversation with a tutor and he put up on the screen an hyper-realistic painting and it was, it was like the hyper-realistic painting you can imagine and it wasn't from a famous artist it was, I think, he pulled it up from an Instagram account or something and it was it was an, it just a person. It was just an, a normal, like a person, a normal artist that he just does that uh, hyperrealistic painting. And people start to call it boring. Um, they were no interesting. They were no. Uh, they were no. They questioned the meaning of the of why somebody wants to do something like that. Meaning there isn't. It's no expressive. It doesn't mean. It doesn't have that energy, you know, when you look at, like, um, no controlled brushworks. So no, nobody kind of liked it, okay? It was really interesting because a few minutes before, in the same talk with the same uh, tutor, he put up on the screen Chuck Close. And nobody, nobody said anything against Chuck Close because, because he's famous. So a strong character, a strong figure in, uh, in the art world. So is that because he's famous by doing hyper-realistic drawing that nobody said anything and nobody called Chucklow's boring the same that why basically Andy Warhol could produce an, a massive a massive amount of lithography with the same subject with the same face maybe different colors but he was just producing stuff for the for the sake of like selling, for the sake of being big. So is the same is that the same concept of because he's famous, he could do it and if somebody else do it, that's not famous and not um a strong figure in the art in the art history they can't do it I understand that art subjective but especially because of this we should not be influenced by other people right such as like critics and teachers and these famous artists when I was researching um, stuff about any world something really um, that really make me not like him he had provocative statement has and I'm quoting the reason I'm painting this way is because I want to be a machine 
and I re I can I can agree with this statement. I disagree with this statement because as a creative, as a painter, I cannot think to be like a machine and just do art only for commercial purposes and only and only because I want to produce something that people likes and I know is gonna sell so I was thinking it was really interesting for me I start thinking about this lately again because I've been as I said at the beginning I've been stuck with my art and there, there is also always every artist as I'm 100% sure that every ad artist has this feeling, this um, voice in the head that it says just do something that everyone can like and it's more easy to sell. Just do it. Like it's no, it's gonna be easy for you, it's gonna be less stressful for you if you just produce a nice picture that people can just buy because it's nice and it's colorful and it's not um, it's not that it doesn't have them deep meaning um, just do it why why you should stress yourself and paint and drawing something that has a meaning or something that it's uh, it's socially uh, as in a social impact and so I was I was feeling I was com I was battling with this idea and this think way of thinking and obviously I don't like it I don't do it and it's not it's not something bad and people shouldn't do it because why not I mean if you want to do it and see you're happy to do it it's fine um, but it made me think it made me think of this during the last week because um yeah i was i was stuck i'm i'm i think i'm still stuck at the moment uh, with my artworks and it was really interesting for me to try to understand how like people like famous artists like Kanye War could could just do it and um I'm not going against him, it's just like something I don't think I can do it and I can uh, produce artworks just because like a machine. So it's really interesting for me to understand what people think about this and if you have, if you have um, an idea or you have something to say just write in the comments maybe and what you think about this argument and question basically questioning what makes an artwork important enough to have a say in art history let's let yeah maybe let's say that um, this is just my way of what i think and maybe it was a bit confusing there was a bit of confusion there when <laughs> when I was talking about this, um, but that's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe the channel, and share the video with everyone. Share the podcast with everybody. And thank you very much from Matteo and Artful Podcast. I'm out.